somebody's got to try them out. Somebody's got to be the, the groundbreaker, and I'm more than happy to do that. Trying to do it all yourself means that the, whatever it is that one's trying to do, you're reliant entirely upon yourself doing that, mm -hmm. and that isn't good in the long term. What I needed to do was to get a core group of people inspired and committed so that it didn't need me. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, people watching another episode of Inspirational Interviews. And today I have a very special guest with whom I've been connected since the start of 2020. It's my honor and privilege to introduce to you Mr. DTM, Kit Barrett. Kit, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks, Harris Ash. It's an uh, it's honor. Great, great experience for you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Kit, uh, this is one of the shows that I host where I uh, get people who have inspired me in some or other ways and I uh, get a little bit closer to them, get to know their stories, their journeys, and also try to get some inspiration out of that for our audience. Uh, to uh, start okay. off the interview, I would like to ask you about your life journey and kind of things that you have done. So um, right from when I was a, a little kid, my interest was in in science. Um, my, my first idea of a career was to be a scientist. Uh, that was mostly because at the time I hadn't heard of the term engineer. Mm -hmm. um, so so I, I was very clear right from the age of, of nine or ten that, that I wanted to work in a, in a technical field. And, uh, and so that made it really quite easy through schools that I knew what I wanted to do. And um, I found that if, if I'm being immodest, I found school relatively easy. And so um, it, that I had time to do additional study. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, at the age of 14 or 15, I was going to night school to learn electronics. Nice. Um, which meant that I, I actually studied the first part of an, an electronics degree before I was 15. <laughs> um, so, um, and, and that was just, you know, I wanted to know about stuff. And that interest in finding things out and going finding things out has stayed with me. I, I still want to know stuff. I want to know how stuff works. I want to make things work better. So um, although at my core, I'm an engineer, um, I then used that to help me with all sorts of other things in life. So I did an engineering degree, of, uh, of course. My, my interest is also in, in television, so I, I started working in the broadcast industry. Um, both of my parents are teachers or educators, and I managed to, or felt, found I dropped into that also very easily. So mm -hmm. although um, I, I'm properly qualified as an engineer, almost as soon as I could, I was passing that knowledge on. I was working as a trainer, uh, working as a technical trainer, um, traveling all over the world. That was just brilliant. But um, you know, my 20s, I started um, regularly, like every week I was flying off to some, some new place. Um, that opened the, the world to me, but um, going and visiting people all over, all over the world, trying to work out how best to communicate with them um, and, and pass on that sort of knowledge to them. Um, I absolutely loved it, you know, that it was both technical, but I was also interacting with people and I was helping them. And um, I, I, I can continue doing that um, from being a technical trainer myself. I mm -hmm. was then running, uh, running training, so working as a training manager. And um, that became more about the, the stakeholders, understanding the drivers of people beyond just simply learning the, the technical mm -hmm. things. So I, I then moved on a little bit more and, and um, did a couple more degrees. <laughs> so I did a Master of Science degree in Technology Management, um, which allowed me to look at things in a, in a different way and uh, helps me understand the, the people issues of technical things. Mm -hmm. And that has been a, a real eye opener and it's changed the way I think about stuff. Of course, I'm interested in the technology, but um, that the technology is nothing without the people. And a lot of engineers forget that. And certainly when I was younger, I was only interested in the nuts and bolts and the resistors and the transistors and stuff, it, you, you know, the, the technical stuff. But mm -hmm. now I'm much more interested in what drives people 
um, what they want out of technology and I, I uh, add to that communication that clearly without that communication, that understanding that, um, that technology doesn't necessarily deliver what, uh, what it could deliver. And so now I'm working again as a, as a technical manager, technical training manager. Um, and again, that's all about understanding people's knowledge needs, working out how best to fill those and delivering, uh, delivering that and working out in particular at the moment, how to do that when we can't meet face to face, which is what we used to do to, uh, to deliver training courses. Awesome. So a well, couple of things that I really picked up is one is that you, know, you started exploring world at a pretty young age. And, and you said whenever you went someplace, uh, you ex started exploring new things and people and other things and that helped you. Other uh, thing is, you no, know, even though you are from technology background and I'm also an engineer now as a manager, but yeah, there's always a people side of things. So technology yeah. is great, but you need to have people uh, with technology without people is nothing so thank you so much for that now uh, let's um, talk a bit about uh, toastmaster i know a bit about your introduction to toastmasters yeah. uh, but for the audience sake would you like to tell us uh, how did you got introduced to toastmaster and how has your yeah. journey been yeah sure thanks um, so both my parents were members of toastmasters and my introduction to that was that my father was trying to build some lights for his club and wanted me to assist building some lights but wanted some lights that did something rather more than, than simply have on-off switches for them. But it's quite difficult to time speeches and watch them. And so asked me if it were possible for me to make uh, a set of lights that timed themselves. Now, now this was the um, mid nineties. I was back, back in the country, um, worked a little, <laughs> lived abroad. So I'd come back into the UK. And so I designed, um, built a, a computer controlled lighting system and needed to see whether it worked properly. Uh, again, the people aspect of it, the user interface. And so mm -hmm. I took it to a local Toastmaster club, um, got friendly with the people there, thought I would go back, and, and so became a member of, of the nearby Toastmasters club. I had uh, three teenage children at the time. After a couple of years of doing that, that life got in the way. <laughs> <laughs> that there was no no evening when I wasn't driving some child to some after school activity <laughs> or other, yeah. and so uh, it wasn't possible after a few years of being a, a member, being a VPE, being a president, being an area director for me to continue because I, I simply couldn't. But uh, I, so I had a, a period of time where I couldn't go, but I still, whenever I was traveling uh, or uh, abroad, I would find clubs in the cities that I was traveling and, and go visit them. It was a brilliant way of um, filling an otherwise boring evening. <laughs> then when I went out to the Middle East, um, I was asked to, to help out with, uh, with a club there and joined again and um, started uh, once again picking up my, my Toastmaster time. So I've been in Toastmasters, uh, started about 20 years ago. But there's a period of about eight or so years in the middle where I, I couldn't, couldn't attend. Thank you. That's a really, really long time in Toastmaster. And I, I've learned a lot from you. My next question is my favorite question about failures. I mean, a lot of interviews, people talk about success and rather boast about success. But one of the things I particularly uh, talk to people is about their failures, one or two failures that they encountered and what were the learnings out of those failures. So would you mind sharing one or two of your failures? Yeah, sure. So I used to work for Sony and I tried setting up a, a club, a Toastmasters club in Sony, uh, obviously called Sony Speakers. What else could it be called? Um, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I got the buy-in from the company, from the HR department, and I started running some, some meetings. And what I found was that if I wasn't there and I was doing overseas trips at the time, that, that the meetings really didn't happen. That mm. what I needed to do was to get a core group of people inspired and committed so that it didn't need me for the first six months to be present 
by the time it became apparent that, that if I wasn't there, it wasn't going to run, that the meetings, there'd been sufficient meetings that hadn't run, that weren't successful, that, that we lost that drive. What I learned is get the people on board first. That although it's a little difficult, trying to do it all yourself means that the, whatever it is that one's trying to do, you're reliant entirely upon yourself doing that. Mm -hmm. And that isn't good in the long term. So my longer term lesson is that if you're trying to run something, it's much better to spread the tasks out, to assist other people so mm -hmm. that you can step back as soon as possible and be available to help rather than trying to run it all yourself um, right from the get-go. I would think that is very applicable for anything that requires more than one people. If you're having a group or team, yeah, you need to set up the right foundation, right team and then start building. Uh, you don't want to build an empire on a very weak foundation uh, so that yeah, with the wind exactly. it can yeah. blow out. Okay, thank you for sharing that uh, experience. So my next question to you is in terms of uh, coronavirus, which I hope is going away. What has been your journey? I know you have been quite involved in a lot of Toastmasters and conferences and also if I have to ask you about one or two takeaway for this whole 2020, what do you think it would be? Uh, well, for a start, um, I started a job under lockdown. That That is a very, very weird experience that to, to get a job during lockdown and to start it without actually going to a place of work, it is a bizarre experience. But the very first thing that, that I did was to use my, my technical knowledge, my experience of, of WebExes and so on to help the, the company do their communication online. I was writing some guides to Zoom. I was coaching people and doing online presentations. And so making that work, that meant that I was using my Toastmasters experience at work. And I could then use my work experience with Toastmasters as Toastmasters went online. And mm -hmm. so because I was writing Zoom guides and so on for work, I was then also writing Zoom guides for the Toastmasters. And because I just like to explore technology, it meant that trying to do things online for the first time, somebody's got to try them out. Somebody's got to be the, the groundbreaker. And I'm more than happy to do that. Figure out how, to, how Zoom works, work out how best to use it for Toastmasters. Um, but the, the most best thing about it is that I was missing my, my friends in Qatar. I lived for three and a half years in, in Qatar. I was the president of a club there. And it's, it, it's an eight-hour flight to Qatar. Yeah. Um, I can't easily just go and visit my friends in, in Qatar for a Toastmasters meeting. So the fact that we could meet online, the moment they went online, I saw that they were going online. I'm still a member of their WhatsApp group. Uh, and so I could meet them online. I could help them with their, their initial online meetings. And I continue to, to keep in touch with them. Indeed, I'm running their contest for them. They needed somebody from outside the club to help run their contest. There was really only one person they were going to ask to do that. Mm -hmm. It was just a question of, of my availability and I, I was free. So the fact that I could keep in touch with them. There's some other people I know in, in Thailand. Um, so I helped run uh, some contests in Thailand. I'm involved with, with clubs, um, as you know, in, in members in the US. It's just brilliant that the, the, the world of Toastmasters has suddenly expanded because you don't have to be physically present. True. It means that I can meet up with people who I haven't seen for, for ages. We can invite people who used to be members along to meetings to, to join up without, you know, they've moved away, they can still come and join. It's just, it's just brilliant. Um, and the fact that I can be the groundbreaker, working out how to do things, that there's plenty of people who've done this, but I'm one, one of them. Um, I can learn about it and then help other people to run their meetings successfully, work out how, how to overcome the limitations of online presentations and online contests. Um, you know, it just, it, it's so, it just so works for me that, it's a techie thing, but it's evolving communication and helping other people and training people and, uh, and documenting and so on. So, no, I just uh, love it. 
I put quite a lot of work into it, but that's because I really rather enjoy doing it. Definitely, definitely. And that we all know that and we know you are the tech guru for <laughs> all this tech 91 in Toastmasters. But yeah, I, I love the fact that yeah, uh, while a lot of people are not taking it in the right spirit, if we look at it in, from the different class, you have a more, more opportunities to connect. I know I've been part of, I mean, yeah, every week I am into India, UK and US, which yeah. in pr practical term is not possible if I have to physically travel, but now I can visit. I just have to be a, in front of a laptop and log into zoom or any other platform yeah. and and get there uh, and get almost similar experience so yeah that's a lot of opportunity so thank you so much and i know you have been trying all the new features so if anytime a new feature come i know kit would be trying so that that's a great to have you in our club as well great so as we are closing in towards the end of the this interview i would like to ask my last and final question is that if uh, Kit has to give a couple of tips for any young engineers or other professional who are either in their final years of studies or they are just starting their career, what would be those? Uh, well, certainly the, the lesson that I've learned is that, um, with that, if I'm talking to other engineers, that engineering may be interesting, but you, you need to understand the people aspects of engineering. It doesn't matter how great a product is, if people can't figure out how to use it, if you can't right. show them how to use it, it it's, a, it's a piece of junk. And, and that, that um, I know as a young engineer myself, I really wasn't interested in, in that people side of things, mm -hmm. but to be successful, and to be successful as, a, as an engineer, you do have to have, you do have to engage with that people side of, uh, of the job. And um, if you, however brilliant you are as an engineer, if you can't communicate that, then it's, it's simply just in your head. And that, that, that will limit your ability to get on in life, that will limit your ability to, um, to, to be fulfilled unless you just want to sit in a back room tinkering away, um, which, which is not a great way to, uh, to, to, to do things. And I've met in my, in my life many brilliant engineers, brilliant designers, who were completely incapable of communicating their designs. Um, and but that's, you know, that's not brilliant. So to be successful as an engineer, you need to have communication skills. That's writing skills, speaking skills, and thinking about the, the stakeholder aspects of, mm -hmm. uh, of the technology. Thank you so much, Kit. That is very profound, yeah. Unless you connect with people, you can't sell whatever engineering yeah. miracle you make. <laughs> so thank yeah, you. Cool. It was a, such a nice experience to have you in this show. Uh, thank you very much. I've also taken some inspiration from you. So this is a bit uh, kind of mutual, but I think you're very inspirational as well. So, yourself. So, thank you very much. Thanks.